So, uh, so welcome to the Nanoscribe 3D laser lithography training. Uh, this is the first part of the training, and let's go through the content, okay? So these are the things that I want to, to explain you. So first I will introduce you to the tool. We will talk about uh, what is the maskless laser lithography and how can we realize 3D uh, maskless laser lithography. After, we will talk about what are the nanoscribe printing configurations, objectives and print field, which is a concept that we need to understand which are the uh, main sample holders that we have in our lab. Also, we will talk about the printing sets uh, and what is the main workflow that you need to follow to realize your structure, okay, to do the exposure. After that, we will talk about NanoGuide website. Uh, Nano, NanoScribe is a very, very good company and they are developing this website. After this training, if you are curious and you want to learn everything, everything about Nanoscribe, you can do it with this website. It's amazing. They have training videos, they have all the explanations, anything you want to know about the tool, really, you can do it in that. And we will give you access, okay, the same way we will give you access to Describe, that is one of the, of the softwares that you need to, to use to work with a with Nanoscribe. So let's start meeting uh, Nanoscribe, okay? Here is not the configuration that we have uh, in our lab. In reality, the configuration that we have is this one that you see in this picture, okay? But the components are exactly the same, okay? In this, in this picture, you can see in a better way. So first, we will talk about these two softwares that we have. The first one you already you already know the describe. This is the one that uh, we will give you the license to install in your own computer. And this first software is the one that you will use to transform your design. So you need to bring your design in an STL format. You can use any software that you like, like SolidWorks, for example that can export the design into STL uh, format. And with it, we will load it into Describe. We will do several transformations to get the final design in another format that is uh, compatible with the tool for exposure. OK, so first, this is the first software. And the second one that you see there is NanoWrite. So NanoWrite is the software that controls the hardware when we want to do the real exposure, okay? And we access both of them from this computer. But as I mentioned, Describe will be on your own computer. So you don't need to book the tool to use Describe. So you can come directly to the tool with your design already converted and just use NanoWrite to expose. So you just use the tool where for the, the real time that you need to use it for exposure. The next thing that you see uh, next to the um, next to the screen, okay, because yes, this is the screen, uh, is this microscope docking station that has a touch screen. This uh, tiny uh, screen uh, is just to understand uh, where is the or what is the current situation of the microscope, okay? So it's a remote control of the microscope. So you can see here it has this knob to focus if you need to do so. And we are we and here we have several um, uh, buttons just to see what is the real status of the of the microscope and to control it. What else? Here we have the stage joystick. The stage joystick is just as I I mean you can imagine it's a joystick that controls the stage. Okay, so you can move the stage, which is this part that you see here, using this joystick up and down and left and right, okay? Then near this microscope, because this is the main microscope, uh, we have these two enclosed cabinets and they need to be enclosed because inside of them we have the optics, also the laser and the galbo, which is one of the motors, okay? So 
it needs to be closed because as you know, because you were taking the safety training for laser, this tool is equipped with a 3B class laser. So it's quite hazardous if the beam uh, reaches your eyes. <laughs> so we need to have it closed. <laughs> Next thing is the microscope itself, okay? So this microscope that you see here is inverted. Here you cannot see, but you will see when we enter in the lab. In the objectives in this microscope, instead of looking down, they are looking upwards, okay? Because we load the sample in here and the microscope is looking up to write onto the sample, okay? So another thing is the piezo motor. Uh, where is my mouse here? This one is the piezo motor. So we talk about the galvo and the piezo, okay? So galvo is more about rough movements. Piezo is for the fine movements, okay? And then uh, the last part that normally uh, users, they don't uh, touch never, okay? Because it's the electronics rack and uh, the PC cabinet, okay? So inside of here, you have a lot of, a lot of electronic controllers and uh, the PC itself. So, next thing. Also about uh, meeting nanoscribe, the, these are few um, uh, characteristics about the tool. What is the technology behind nanoscribe? And I'm going to explain more about this. It's a layer by layer to photon polymerization. The minimum feature size that you can reach is 200 nanometer. And you see here we have this mark. It's because it depends, okay? It's not with all the configurations. So there is one configuration that you can reach 200 nanometers, but it depends on the printing set that you are using. So what kind of laser is it using? So it's using an infrared pulse laser, okay? So the, this is the wavelength, it's 780 nanometers in the infrared. The laser power uh, is on average like less than 180 milliwatts. The maximum object height that we can get in our lab is two millimeters. And again, we have this mark because you cannot reach two millimeters with all of, the, all of the objectives and configurations that we have. It's exactly only with one, okay? What are the substrates that you can bring or you can use? They can be silicon, they can be fused silica, they can be ITO, coated glass, or just a covered sleep, okay? I need to mention that the users need to bring their own samples. So for the first sessions, we can provide you with one or two samples so you can start working with the, with the tool, right? But after that, whenever you know what, what is the type of sample that you would like to use, you will go with your own samples, okay? What are the photoresists that uh, we are using with Nanoscribe? You can see here some of them. Okay, maybe in future we will have more because these are all developed by Nanoscribe. Okay, and each of these photoresists has different, uh, they have different uh, characteristics. So depending on your structure and your needs, you will need to go to one or to another one. And we have all of these. Okay, we will talk more because normally these are the ones that are allowed to use. I mean, these are the, the photoresists that normally people is using. But there is one configuration we will see later where you can use other type of resist, and I will mention it, okay? For now, keep this in mind. And now, let's talk about 3D maskless laser lithography. How can we realize 3D using a laser? Because uh, we have other tools for maskless laser lithography in the, in the clean room, right? They exist, 2D laser lithography. Okay, and what is a maskless laser lithography? So it's a lithography process where you bring your design directly from a design in the computer into your substrate. You don't need to expose through a mask, okay? To just print directly 
with the design using a tool onto your substrate. What happens when you are using a 2D maskless laser lithography system that normally they are equipped with a UV laser, okay? So the UV laser has a shorter wavelength, around 405, for example, the laser writer we have in our lab is 405 nanometers wavelength. So this is shorter than the infrared, right? It means it has more energy. So what happens because it has more energy? So that in the moment that this laser is touching the photoresist, all the path that is uh, in touch with the laser will be polymerized. Because just one photon of this UV laser has enough energy to reach the threshold of the polymerization. You have it well here. So we reach the threshold of polymerization in all the path the laser goes through, right? Because just one photon is enough. That's why you can do 2D and not 3D. Because the, the secret of 3D is that the photon for the I, uh, infrared laser doesn't have enough energy to polymerize the photoresist. In reality, it's completely transparent. Because one photon just has normally the half of the energy that we need to start the polymerization. So how can, how can we print? What Nanoscribe is doing is using uh, one microscope to focalize in one spot this laser, and this spot is called voxel, okay? So in this region of the volume, the concentration of photons of this uh, infrared laser is that high that is so common that two photons arrive to the same point at the same time. And then what we get? Double energy. Because if we get two photons that arrive to the same point at the same time, we will reach the threshold of the polymerization and we will realize just to print into this spot, okay? And this way is how we print. And this image is just very clear showing what this spot is doing because the rest of the photoresist is transparent. The only point that is written or exposed is the one that is on the voxel, okay? So, this voxel uh, can be modified, okay? You can adjust the voxel size, adjusting the dose, and also changing the objective or the printing set that you are using. We don't have the same size if we are using different type of objectives in the, in the nanoscribe. And this voxel is not a spot, round, is what I mean. It is ellipsoidal. Okay, as you can see, so it has an aspect ratio between X and Y, it doesn't have the same size. So, now let's start talking about the printing configurations, okay? The one that you see on this side, on the left, is the old uh, configuration. This is the first one that Nanoscribe was releasing with the first uh, Nanoscribe tools and it's uh, the DLW, or we call it oil immersion. Because here you can see in this representation how it is, okay? So the configuration is just, you will have the objective, okay? Then you will have an oil, the substrate, and on top of the substrate, we have the photoresist. So the nanoscribe objective is completely dipping into this oil, okay? And this oil is matching the reflective index of the substrate in a way that the objective thinks, or the microscope, doesn't detect the oil. The objective thinks that this and this is the same, but not this because there is a different, and it needs to be like this, we need to have enough difference of refractive index between the substrate and the photoresist for the tool 
to detect where to start printing. Because if not, the tool doesn't know where it needs to start printing. So, this configuration has some limitations. And the limitations are these ones, okay? The height of the structure, okay, uh, is going to condition the, the results. Because the higher the fabricated structure is, the worse it gets the quality of the printing because of spherical aberrations. And I'm going to explain why. Because if you see this configuration, the nanoscribe will start printing in this point up. So it's from bottom to top. So it will print like this, two, 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 two. and the higher it goes, the laser needs to go through to print, right? And it will be going through already polymerized photoresist. So this polymerized photoresist will create some aberrations. So the higher you go, the worse it gets the quality of the exposed um, object. Next uh, limit of this configuration is that uh, the height of the structure is also limited. Why? Because if the objective is going up and up and up and up, there is a limit. And is this <laughs> the limit? Because if you go higher, you will crash. <laughs> okay? So what is this limit? This limit is defined by the working distance of the, of the objective minus the thickness of the substrate. Okay? So, this thickness of this substrate is 170 microns. Why I know? Because you can only use one type of substrate with this configuration. And this is another limitation for this, for this uh, configuration because you can only use one type of substrate. <laughs> okay? And also, it must be transparent because it cannot, it cannot be opaque. So, you cannot use silicone, for example, in this configuration, right? But it has one positive thing, and it's this one in the middle. You can use different type of photoresist, apart from the IP, from the ones that are from, uh, from Nanoscribe. Do you remember that I mentioned in the beginning, like you can only use the Nanoscribe photoresist except in this configuration? Because the objective is in contact with oil, so it doesn't matter what you put here, okay? So you can put SU8, you can put AZ photoresist, okay? And most of the photoresist that we use in this, uh, in this uh, machine, and it has to be, they should be negative. So uh, negative tone photoresist. So what you uh, expose remains, okay? So this is the old style. The new style and the one that is... The, under my point of view, the best of them is this one, okay? In this configuration, we have less things because we only have the objective, the photoresist, and the substrate, okay? And we call it DIIL or deep in laser lithography. Deep in because the objective is directly immersed into the photoresist. So, what are the advantages of this? Uh, configuration. So aberration is minimized and constant. Why? Because there is no like polymerized photoresist when, when uh, exposing. In reality, we are exposing from here to here. So it's from top to bottom, right? Like inverted. So you will be always exposing onto new photoresist. So there is no aberration, okay? What is one uh, inconvenience or from this configuration that you can only use photoresists that are developed by Nanoscribe and they are compatible with the lenses? Because if you use any photoresist that is not compatible with the lenses, you can damage the objective, okay? And the objectives are quite expensive. So we take care of them <laughs> because we need them to be in a, in a good state. 
So only IP, you can IP photo resist you can use. And another advantage of this uh, configuration is the height of your structure. It can be as high as you want because there is no limit now. Because it, it's printing from top to bottom, you can go as far as you want. Okay? So, next step is to talk, okay, what are the two uh, objectives that we have in our lab? And what is the print field? I will explain later. So, we have these two uh, objectives. One is the 63 and one is the 25. Both objectives are, uh, are good. It's not that one is better than the other one, but it depends on your structure. What is the minimum feature size that you need to realize that you will be going for the 63 or the 25. So the most used is the 25 because if you don't need to reach 200 nanometers of resolution, you can use this one. And the resolution that you can uh, achieve using this one is 600 nanometers. So it's still very good in resolution, right? And why people is using more of this? Because it's faster. Because the higher the resolution, the slower the writing is. So the more time it will take. And depending on the size of your structure, you will be going to one objective or the other one. One important thing to mention, and then something that you should know, is that these objectives, they have a specific position in the turret of the microscope. So this means that you cannot place them in any turret. Here I don't have a picture, but you will see when you go to the lab to do the in-person second part of the training. And you will see we have different slots for the objectives. And the 63 has to go always in the number three. And the 25 has to go always in the number five. It's easy to remember because 63, three, 25, five. <laughs> okay? So Nanoscry is doing it easy for us. Next thing is to understand what is the print field, okay? The print field is the area of the substrate that can be exposed in a single block, okay? Just in one go, let's say, okay? So it depends on two things. On the galbo, sorry, on the piezo uh, range, that you can see in here, the piezo range of movement is 300 by 300 by 300 microns. And also it depends on the objective that you are using. Here you can see the different print fields of the different objectives that Nanoscribe can have. We only have the 25 and the 63, okay? Because you, you see also here the 10, and the 20 and another one, but we have only the 25 and the 63. So it's a combination between these two uh, printing fields, okay? And which one is the one that will define the area of exposure or the minimum area of, or, sorry, maximum area for exposure is the most restrictive one. For example, if you are using the 25 uh, um, objective, okay, you can see that we have a radius of 200 microns, so in total the diameter of this uh, printing uh, area is 400 microns, right? Because this is the radius. So, but the piezo is just 300 by 300. So the combination of these two, the most restrictive one is the piezo. So if you are using the 25, the printing area that will be uh, for your exposure will be 300 by 300. Instead, if you use the 63, okay, that has higher resolution, 
okay, you have a radius of 100 microns, so the total diameter of this printing area is 200 microns. And the PSO is 300 by 300. Here, the most restrictive one is the objective. So the area that you can print is a circle of 200 microns. And this is what you need to understand, that we have a limited area for exposure in one block. What this means, block, is that that you cannot expose bigger structures? No. But you will have to divide your structure in different blocks. Okay? It's just if you imagine cutting your structure in different cubes. Okay? For exposure. Next topic. Sample holders. I'm going to show you what are the main two sample holders that we have in our clean room. We have more, but these are the most common, okay? So we have the DIIL sample holder, and as you can imagine, this one is for the D-pin laser lithography, okay? The one that we use when we want to, to expose D-pin, the objective, into the photoresist directly, okay? So here you have different slots because you can put different type of samples and different sizes. The sizes and the type of materials that you can use is written in here and the thickness is important to make it coincident, okay? This is the most important thing, is in here, okay? So please respect these uh, uh, measurements, okay? Um, then, the next one. This is the other, the other configuration sample holder. Do you remember the old style configuration, DWL? So the sample holder for that one is this one, and all the slots are the same. Why? Because you can only use one. <laughs> so this substrate is provided by the lab. This is the only one that we are providing, okay? This one you don't need to buy. We have thousands of them in the lab. I will show you where to get it and you can use it, okay? And all the slots are uh, for the same type of, of sample. Next thing are the printing sets. So these printing sets uh, are combinations of the previously explained things, like the printing configuration, the different photoresist that I show you, the different substrates, and the sample holder and objectives, okay? So each of these printing uh, sets is covering different uh, structure needs. So you will be using the one that fits your needs, depending on your structure, okay? On what you want to realize with the nanoscribe. I'm showing you the ones that we have here. So is the 3DSF or uh, small features, the oil 3D SF, which is the oil configuration for small features, and the 3D MF, which is the medium feature uh, 3D configuration, okay? And as you can see here, it's telling you what is the objective that you have to use, what are the, the most common photoresists that you can use, okay? What are the type of substrate that normally you will use, and so on. And here, just for your information, and I'm going to share with you this, um, this presentation slides, okay? You will be able to, to download. Um, you can see different things and you can go through them, okay? But as I mentioned in the beginning, remember, NanoGuide website has all this information. In fact, I got it from there, okay? So no worries to take note of this or to take pictures. You will, you, you will be able to see it here because I will, uh, I will put these slides for you to be downloaded. And uh, you can see also these kind of tables in the website of uh, NanoGuide, okay? These are some uh, characteristics of the 3D small features and the 3D medium features, the kind of 
uh, structure. This is just one example, okay? What is the volume that normally, the maximum volume that you can print in this configuration? And what is the voxel aspect ratio, okay, that you can get, okay? So, let's talk now about the Nanoscribe workflow. Uh, because these are the steps that you will need to follow whenever you want to print your uh, structure. So, and this is exactly the whole process that we will do whenever we, walk, we go into the lab and we do together the second part of the training, okay? So, you will bring your STL file, you will load it into the scribe, and then you will convert into the GWL format using the scribe. This part, you will be able to do it already on your computer. Then you will bring to the lab this file. You will load it into NanoWrite. NanoWrite will operate the tool to expose, and then we will finish the, the process, doing the final processing of the sample, developing, okay, and curing even more if we need. Okay, so last uh, slide, uh, and this is the this is the Nano Guide uh, web page where they have all the knowledge about Nanoscribe. Anything you, if you want to become a real expert on the tool, you have here everything. Okay. Here I put something that is super interesting and I will show you um, whenever we go inside of the lab because I have in the computer of the lab, you can enter already into, into this nano guide and to load with my, log in with my credentials. They are already there, saved. And if you go to the print set selector, it will help you to select the, the best printing set depending on your structure volume and uh, the minimum feature size, I will show you how to use it. And as I mentioned, my user and password credentials are in the PC, in the office, and also in the lab. Okay, so thank you for your attention, and we will see each other inside of the lab.